How's it going guys? This is Forensic Force with Deontay and I'm back with another video. This is the makeup for last night. I apologize because of the technical difficulties, we weren't able to have Forex Fridays. Just called it a night. It crashed two times on me. So I called it a night and said, hey, I'll give you guys a video tomorrow because your time is valuable to me. I don't want to waste anyone's time. I apologize for what occurred. Everything I post on the channel, I want it to be quality. I don't want anything to be interrupted. I don't want anything to be faulty. If I'm going to put it out, I'm going to put it out the way I want it to. And thank you guys for all the nice comments, the emails, the support. I really appreciate anybody that follows me on TradingView, IG, whatever my platform is. I know I'm not always often available on all of them, mainly on Telegram. Shout out to all you guys. Shout out to all you guys that also show the models work, showing proof and evidence that what I'm doing is actually bringing value to your trading career. I really appreciate that. So with that being said, let's jump right into the makeup video. So the weekly opening range is basically how I find overbought and oversold conditions. So those that are familiar with that, they know that anytime price moves above the weekly opening price or Sunday's opening price, I use that interchangeably. Some people get confused. Once price moves above it, you're overbought. Price is at a higher value. When price moves below it, it's at a lower value. It's at discount. It's cheaper. Now, ideally, when it comes to the marketplace, if you're looking to be a buyer, you want to buy at a discount. It only makes sense, guys. You want to buy cheap. And if you're looking to be a seller, you want to sell your car or you want to sell your house at the highest possible bid that you can offer, right? And that's how it normally works. You want to sell your home at above asking price or whatever you paid for it potentially. So if you brought an investment property, you're trying to sell or flip flip the house, bring up the market value of the house and sell it at a higher price so that you could take the difference. That's what's occurring here. You can see here on a general bullish week. So this week, ideally, you can see hindsight is telling us that it was bullish. Now, any way to learn, you have to use hindsight. This is a classic bullish week. We can see Tuesday makes the low of the week. While Thursday makes the high of the week. So very opposite sides of the market. The low, the high. But we can see Tuesday takes out the previous daily low. So that's where the magic starts happening. That's when it starts brewing here. It takes out the low. And when it takes out the low, where is it doing it? Below the opening price. At a cheaper price or a less valuable price. However, though it is less valuable. Or at, I mean not less valuable. Cheaper it may be more valuable to someone else and they buy it cheap. And what do they do? They fix it back up and they sell it high. It's the same thing. If you were buying a home, you find a rundown house. The price has devalued on the house. You come in, you renovate it. And then the value of the house goes up and then you take the profit and sell off. So you see Friday is a counter trend candle normally on a bullish week. So there's a couple tips, a bullish week. If you get the high on Thursday, generally, Thir Friday may not take out Thursday's high and may give you an opportunity to go short. So maybe a London close scalp opportunity to go short and a premium. So any sell ideas normally up here, I like to catch it during London close because if the market is trading up during New York and London and we're still in a premium, London close is the last session I have available to me to find a short opportunity. So here in the orange highlighted area, you can see that's London close. You can see here on Friday, look at how it sells off here. Here, there was probably a small one, but you ultimately got stopped. Unless your stop loss was hefty enough above this high or whatever lower time frame PD array, you could have been able to catch the short if your stop loss was at a certain limit. Now, I'm not saying that it was guaranteed, but generally London close is a reversal to the daily trend. So a lot of things about Forex that many people don't know. The sessions have different characteristics. London, New York, London close, Asian open, the New York lunch, the London lunch, even the Asian session lunch, all these periods have all different characteristics. So you're throwing a lot intraday at you. And if you don't know what you're doing, you can be really lost in the sauce. But here, this keeps me on track. I know that if I was looking for a buy setup, it's gotta be discount. It's ha it has to be. It can't be buying a premium. Yes, the market looks to be going up higher, higher, higher. But does that mean I have to buy every single day? No, unless it's a counter trend day. And we'll talk about that as well. Counter trend days, amazing once you find the trend. It's like night and day. 
And that's probably going to be the real climax of this video. Price takes out the previous daily low and then runs higher. Let's look at something that's inverse to this. So if we look at the yen futures, we can see that's Sunday's opening price here. Now to answer someone's question briefly, for the currency, Sunday's opening price here is 1700 I'm in New York, but if you set your trading view thing to UTC-4 New York, it will calibrate that to New York time. And this is 5 p.m. in New York. So if you start here at 12, take this off. That's 12 p.m. That's one. That's two. That's three. That's four. And that's five. So 12 all the way up to five. That's your opening price for the new weekly candle. That's fair value. Anything above? High probability sell scenario if price action allows. Anything below? High probability buy scenario if price action allows. And it definitely did. It was called for because it rated the previous day low, continue going higher. You're normally going to catch the low of the week on these two days. Generally, it's three, these three days here. But ideally, I'd rather it on Tuesday and Wednesday because that's the bulk portion of the range. Majority of the weekly candle forms on this day, this day, and sometimes even this day. And sometimes it changes a bit. Sometimes it's mainly on one day, like Monday per se. It's larger on Monday. But here, ideally, I like to avoid the Mondays because I normally run into that. I don't like that. I don't want to run into consolidation. Psychologically trips you up. Makes you think that your setup isn't going anywhere. And you jump ship and then you go on to the other side. You're a buyer at first and you're like, oh, it's not going anywhere. Then you close, take the loss, small loss or whatever, or large loss if you're risking high and not using proper risk management. You take the loss, you jump ship, you go on to the other ship, you're a seller now. And then it doesn't sell. And then you're flip-flopping and trying to guess if it's going to go up or down. Just wait till something happens. See that? Price takes out the previous daily low. That's why I like to look at it on the one-hour perspective, breaking down the weekly view. I can see all the obvious areas of buy side and sell side based on the daily time frame. The daily highs and lows are very significant to price. You can see here, price takes out the previous daily high here on Tuesday. So it's inverse to Japanese UJ. This is Japanese yen futures, so it's going to be inverse. Price takes out the previous daily high and a premium. They sell it at a premium. So it feels scary at first because I know many people say, but Deontay, it's going up. Shouldn't that be a buy? That's what most new comers would say, someone that's just starting off trading something. It's going up, so I have to buy. No, that's not the case. It's going up to lure you to think it's going to buy. Sometimes it could go higher. That may be the case. But majority of the times, if it's going up and it's taking out the previous daily high and the higher time frame is telling you it's going to go lower, they're doing it in that opportunity, purging the buy side, getting everybody to go long. They see it go up. They start chasing longs. But then the commercials say, nope, change your mind. They go short. So they purge the buy side above the high and then revert while doing all of this in a premium. So it lines up with that as well. And you see how price slowly breaks down all the way down Thursday. So this is the classic sell week. You have a high. Like I said, it could be on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, preferably Tuesday and Wednesday. But you see it happens on Tuesday, the high of the week here. And then on Thursday, you got the low of the week. And you can see how Friday gives you a counter trend opportunity to go long. Or even Thursday gives you an opportunity to go long at one point in time. So that's what you normally be looking for in a sell week. If you've done your fundamentals, your technicals, your macros, etc., and you came to the conclusion that the weekly candle what you're looking at is literally the weekly candle depicted on the one hour chart. It went, it opened at this point, moved above the open at one point and then dropped. So that's, that's what it looks like. It looks like this. The weekly candle looks like that drops and it closes open high, low close. That's what's happening there. So price is doing that constantly on all asset classes. It doesn't matter. You could be looking at crypto stocks, you be looking at foreign currency, futures, metals, commodities, whatever it is you can be looking at, it does the same thing. So if you look here for the DXY, it's directly correlated with UJ, of course, and inversely correlated with the futures of yen. Previous daily low, low forms on Tuesday, it's below in the discount, guys. Now, some people may say, how do I know how low it's going to go into a discount? You may not know. But what you could do, you can use other things like 
previous PD arrays that you can see in the price action that's on the left side of the chart that needs to be filled back in. Any inefficiency in price that you think it would be a quote unquote retail support level and it can respect it and it goes higher, that's what you can suspect. Or you can do a very static approach. You can say if price drops below the opening price by 30 pips, I'm buying with a 50 pip stop loss and a 120 TP. You could do something like that. And it could be very rewarding, especially if you've gotten it right. If you got that the weekly candle is going to go up, you can just wait to say, this is a model that I'm verbally expressing to you. If you're bullish on the week, just wait for price to drop below this Sunday's opening price. I know that sounds scary, but it makes sense. You want to buy cheap. The commercials, the guys, that the big dogs that control the price, they're pulling it lower because they want to buy it cheap. They sold it high and they're buying it cheap again. Wait for price to drop down here. That could be 15, 20, 30, 40 pips. I would say anywhere roughly if price drops below the Sunday's opening price, if I had to do it, this model, this lazy trader approach, I would say if price drops below the Sunday's opening price or the weekly opening price and I'm bullish on the week, I suspect it to go higher. I want price to run away from the open, go up. I would want to see it drop below the open by at least 30 pips. I want to see price drop below Sunday's opening price by at least 30 pips. So that could be a ballpark of 20 pips at least and maximum 45 pips. I want to see it drop below and I want it to land on either a Tuesday or Wednesday, preferably. That's what I want to happen. That's where I want to find my buy setup and then price should run higher and I have a stop loss of, let's say, 50 pips, 60 pips. All depends on what I'm working with with equity and how much I'm allowed to risk. And then I would hold for higher prices. I want to see price take out previous daily highs because if it's trending, it's going to keep taking out the previous daily high. Look how this market up raids, right? The purge come here, consolidate and it's back, reverts back to buy side because it takes the sell side previous daily low reverts back to the buy side consolidates runs up consolidates then down end of the period and you notice as well another key this consolidation we'll talk about this during the Asian session model that's a dead period that dead period is 12 p.m to 8 p.m new york eastern standard time nobody should be trading between that time period it is consolidation there is no late p.m sessions set up for foreign currencies i trade foreign currencies mainly sometimes i get into the metals or sometimes i get into the commodities but mainly deontay focuses on the foreign currencies consolidation normally occurs between 12 p.m and 8 p.m that's why it's so confusing to a new trader they think that they can just trade any time of the day they think oh it's tuesday oh it's about to be 5 30 5 30 p.m it's time to trade no it's not time to trade you're in a dead period guy it's not time to trade you need to relax put the phone down wait till a new session occurs i'm telling you that most likely it's going to be consolidation and we'll talk about that during the asian session model as well just keep that in mind and keep this in mind as well. When we get into other models, you're going to start to see why the opening price is very crucial to trading. Your trading career is going to be a lot better once you start comprehending this ideology. The same thing can be said on a intraday level as well. So just briefly here, if we were to take Tuesday, to just to break down Tuesday. If we had to start the day with midnight. Right, 12 a.m., right, if the true day, 12 a.m., midnight opening price, zero, zero here, that's 12 a.m. It's the same idea. Anything above 12 a.m. open is premium. Anything below is discount. So if you're looking to be a buyer, you want to see price drop below the open. It's cheaper. But it feels scary to buy down here because you see it drop. You see it drop. And that psychologically goes against what you think buying looks like because buying looks like that. But you're telling me, Deontay's telling you buy when you see this. That feels scary. I know. It does. And it was scary for me at first, but I had to learn, whoa, there's nothing to be scared about because I want to buy cheap. <laughs> I want to buy cheap. Thank you. I don't want to buy up here, guys. I don't want to buy here. No, I don't want to buy there. I want to buy down here. That's where I get all the points for that's that small switch up from retail logic to commercial logic. Commercials are buying cheap. 
What are retail traders doing? They're buying expensive. Nobody wants to buy an asset at over market value price. I want to buy it below market value price. If I could buy a house that's run down, lose, had lost market value, and I could go in and renovate it and fix it up and then increase its value and then take the difference, I want to do that. And that's just like a little real estate play. It's just a real simple thing. You know, if you if you're someone that likes the real estate, that's what people do. And then you go up in value. Cheap down here. Expensive. But retail is buying expensive. And commercials are buying cheap. That's the biggest difference. They're always opposite. They're doing things opposite. Because retail doesn't know any better. Retail does not know any better. And this is all based off of no indicators. The natural price action is telling you where overbought and oversold is. Soon as price drop below 12 a.m., it's oversold, guys. It's oversold. And, and during one point of the day, during the session, whether that's London or New York, you're looking for an opportunity to go long. If you think that the day is going to be long, that's how I base it. And you can also see a double confluence. It's also below Sunday's opening price. So it's a discount for the week and discount for the day. That could also include the session's opening price. And like I said, we'll talk about that for the Asian session model. Even though it doesn't go along the lines of the higher time frame analysis, you'll see how it also conforms to buying and selling. So generally, when it comes to trading any week, and I had let's say I had no idea whether or not the weekly candle is going to go up and down, I'm referencing this. I'm going back to this. This is my safe zone to keep me in check and say, okay, if I'm up here, you should be looking for a sell scenario. Sometimes that's only 15, 20 pip, a 15 pip scalp, 20 pip scalp. The duration of the trade is either an hour or, hour or less than or 30 minutes or maybe even two max, an hour or two or two for a quick scalp, 15, 20 pips. Anything else than that, I may not get. I may get stopped out. It happens. But the idea still follows suit. You're looking for the sell setup in a premium. You're looking for the buy setup in a discount. The days as well. Don't forget that the days are very crucial. This is a classic buy. It could also look different. It could have been like this. Boom, Wednesday, then we take off. Then we come back down. There we go. That's what I like. These are the weeks I really like to trade because it's very simple to see. You're purging sell side and running back to buy side. And when you get the bias right, it feels so sweet. Feels sweet. Same thing could happen inversely too for the futures contract, instead of it being Tuesday, as we see here, it could have been Wednesday and it could also be Monday. It could do something like this. Consolidate, runs up, breaks down. Thursday, pulls back. There we go. That That's one scenario. Another scenario could be consolidate through Monday, Sunday, Tuesday, consolidation, right? Wednesday, ooh, down, close out. That's what could happen. That's another scenario. And there's also other weekly profiles. But these are the most classic ones that I like to see because it's just so easy to find. And not saying it forms every single week, but it's easier for me to see these projections. So hopefully that makes sense. So moving forward, we're going to talk about the agent session model, my very favorite intraday model. We're going to run through this real quickly because I already have a series, a, li a library of it. So if you haven't seen that, just go on to my channel, type in. Um, Asian session library, and you'll see the episodes. I think we're up to like episode eight, pushing nine. You're going to see one example as well where it just keeps, it just takes off. There are times where this, this model takes off. It's my favorite model to look at. So we're going to break it down. I already have everything annotated, but we're going to talk about it as we go forward. Like I said, I already have this in a library. We'll keep all the annotations here. I just don't want it to be too confusing. I want the chart to be clean as possible. That's why I don't like to use indicators. Clean, clean, clean charts. I love clean clean charts. So what I'm doing is, this is the dead zone that I was telling you about. As you can see here, it's highlighted in blue. That's the dead zone, 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. Just notice all the highlighted areas that are blue. That's 12 to 8, 12 to 8. Yes, yeah, so you're going to have days like this. But then you're going to have days like this. And I think most of the time, so if you're going to have days like this, don't trade that. Don't trade it. Look at that. Chop, chop, back and forth. That will psych you out. Chop, 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 chop. How many more times can I say chop, chop? That's choppy. That's choppy. That's very choppy. That's choppy as well. So you see 
I avoid that time period. That's why I say there's no trading permitted. If you're trading after that, you're chasing price, guys. You're chasing price. You're trying to take a setup late after 12 p.m. Don't even bother. Put the phone down. So I'm looking for buy side and sell side liquidity or finding the highest high just before 8 p.m. So you can see this is how I marked it off. No fans going. High right before 8 p.m. So I mark it off. Sometimes it's not this high unless I'm really sure there's a swing high formation because this can be a swing high. Once this opens and doesn't take out this high, it could be. But I'm marking it off here just for the replay sake. Swing high. Swing high, swing high. Now, many people ask, what's a swing high formation? A swing high formation is simply when this candle here has a lower high on the left and a lower high on the right. This candle itself with the red line on the top is the swing high. It needs a candle on the left and a candle on the right to make it a swing high. It doesn't have to be four candles on the left, four candles on the right, six, eight. No, it's just one and one. That's your swing high. That's how you easily, quickly define and find buy side liquidity. Same thing inverse for swing lows. It's sell side liquidity. There's a higher low on the left and a higher low on the right. That's that swing low formation there. If you play price forward, play it like this. You can see price opens here. That's the 8 p.m. open. Looks like it was going to take out sell side, but quickly runs up. Now, this is something I like to key off of. Retail traders start the session. Commercial traders end the session. Now that may sound confusing, but think about it. As soon as the session starts, what are people desperately trying to do? Make money. They try, hey, the market's live. Let's go. Stock market's open. Time to make money. It's a new week. It's time to make money. That's what they're doing. They're getting in, chasing price. And some of them get hurt doing that. That's why I wait. Wait for the setup to form. Let it come to me. So you can see price takes out a high here. So in theory, this wouldn't be the swing high formation because you see it opens and it runs up. The swing high formation should be the next candle that goes here. So this would be the swing high. But if we're looking at it like this, we could hypothetically look at it as that high that was ran. Go down to the one minute time frame. Actually, no, because if it's not the swing high, I'm not going to even count it. We'll leave the swing high alone. That's the swing high I want to see price run to. So you play it forward. You can see price there runs that 15 minute swing high formation. Here, price makes the fair value gap. Now, this fair value gap is forming where? Above 8 p.m. opening price. It's the same thing that I'm showing here, the weekly opening price. I said I was going to show you a fractal idea here. 8 p.m. opening price is the same thing. Anything above is a premium. Anything below is a discount. So if we were to mark it off, it would look like this. You got yourself premium, which is going to be higher in value or overbrought. And then you got yourself discount, which is something that's going to be undervalued or cheaper. I want to sell when things are overvalued because I could get my most maximum reward from it. So if we play price forward, you're going to see price trade into it. Ideally, I'm risking a one to one setup. So looking for 20 pips. Generally, sometimes you get 30, 40 pips more, 60, 80, 90, even 100 pips sometimes. But I'm not that greedy. I'm just trying to get 20 pips. So this is what it would look like, because I know some people like to see it on the chart. So that's the 20 pip there. I'll pull this down to 20. And you'll see that this trading thing will tell you it's a ratio of one. It's a one to one there. So that's what I would do. And I'll wait for price to try and trade back into that. And see if we can get the sell setup. Pause it here. I'm going to drag it out. Normally, I like to see the setup start and finish early by like 930. Sometimes it's later. And it just happens. You see how price goes all the way back into notice how price gets all the way back down to the discount, though. So you can see it's taking buy side runs up buy side sell side guys. Notice that that's very key. That's all the market is really doing. We run back into that fair value gap. You can see there. 
I'm just going to pause it right when we get to like 8 p.m. So like that's what we were looking at. Now we didn't get the full 20 pips, but you can see definitely gave you profit. So ideally max amount of profit we could have received close to 15 pips. So five pips shy of 20. So it's a very simple model when you look at it. And it can be very rewarding and you can use it to compound and scale an account. You can look to use this every day if you want it to. Does it mean it has to work every single day? No, it's not a 100% model. I don't know what model out there is 100%. There might be other models that are very more advanced. And the way models, I believe, get advanced, they're optimized. What day a week is it being taken? I'm using the Asian session model, but I'm only using it on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I personally think it's ideal to use it on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I think that the trade idea is exacerbated. It tends to follow the higher time frame bias, and it also tends to give me more than 40 pips. And it runs off. Does that mean it doesn't happen on Monday? Doesn't happen on Wednesday? Doesn't happen on Friday? No. And even Sundays too. Believe it or not, sometimes the idea does form on Sundays. You just have to include Friday and Sunday's data to make your New York lunch. But that's how I use this setup here. And we're just going to run to the next example. And we're going to follow the same case scenario. So we'll play it forward so we get there. Trading view should definitely incorporate something where you can just like move it forward to where you want it and then start it again. So you see, mark it off. So you got price here, taking out this high, right? Just before 8 p.m. This is the high that forms just before 8 p.m. there. Price comes out, takes out that high. But do we get a fair value gap that forms above that high? So we'll just delete that. No, we don't. This fair value, because many people ask you, oh, why did you not take the sell on Tuesday, for the example? Because the fair value gap is not forming above 8 p.m. opening price. That's 8 p.m. That dashed line is 8 p.m. Think about that as the line in the sand that's dividing premium and discount. That's what's happening there. So anything below here is discount. The bulk of this fair value gap is where? In a discount. It's not in a premium. If it's breaking a swing high, I want it, the fair value gap to form somewhere up here instead then price would do what price would go up create the fair value gap here here trade into it and then go short that's what i'm looking for that doesn't happen here many people are like why do you take the short because it didn't follow the steps that's not a filter of mine that it didn't it didn't check that box so we ignore that setup let me see price continues to trade lower eventually it gets down to what down here sell side liquidity so you can see the same idea is formulating again, buy side to sell side. But here we didn't, we weren't able to find an opportunity to go short here. It's okay, but we could find an opportunity now to go long now, that's it. So at that point, I look for the first fair value gap that forms after taking out that sell side liquidity. And we can see it's here. Do we get price to come back down into this fair value gap? No, but there are multiple fair value gaps here that forms, there's one here, there's another one here, and we'll talk about which one could be more ideal in a case scenario in a minute. So you can see that. And then after hitting that, those fair value gaps, there's multiple ones. We'll go through some of them as well. Look at how price gives you an opportunity to go long. Where in a discount. Isn't that so weird? Isn't that just so interesting to see how they pull price down and then they buy it? Let's get below the open, then buy it back. It's the same thing here, guys. It wasn't really drastic this week. Normally, you'll see it drop, you know, below and then run up. But this week, this week it was really quick. That means they really wanted price to get somewhere before the end of the week. And you'll see, price can sometimes give you more than 20, 30 pips. And we'll play it all the way out to the Asian close. There we go. Now, the ideal fair value gap normally, I would suggest people to go for, is the one that causes the market shift. So if we were to delete this one, delete this one, 
this is the fair value gap that causes the market shift. How do I know that? Well, it's because it's speed. The fair value gap is speed. It's all buy side here. Algorithmically, the market is only giving an offering buy side here or buy orders. And then the next candle also does that. And then price could come back down and fill in this inefficiency. This is a swing high here. See how that swing high? There's speed through that swing high. So we mark it off. That's where that market shift is occurring. So we got a market shift. That's the fair value gap. That's ideal. Normally, I'm taking the lowest fair value gap or the first one because that could be the most lowest point I could buy at. I want that low opportunity. I want to get as close to the turning point. Sometimes it's the very first fair value gap that forms based on my back testing and my knowledge personally. Sometimes I miss the entry and it's okay if I miss the entry because there might be another one that I can find. Or if it misses the entry and I don't ever get the entry or I use another fair value gap that I want or nothing that I like is coming to, I can use another PD array. I can use a breaker. I can use a mitigation block. I can use the volume imbalance. I can use a gap. You can use these things. I can use a propulsion block. You can use all those other PD arrays as well based on the ideology that sell side is being purged. I personally like the PD array that ICT taught, the fair value gap. It's quick, easy, simple to see. Not to say that the other PD arrays are not simple to see, but I like that one and I prefer that one. So price is going higher there. Price taps into that market shift, fair value gap, and it goes higher. But you can see multiple times, what's this? A fair value gap, price trades into it. Where is this fair value gap also forming? Below 8 p.m. open. Another opportunity to go long or pyramid your trade. That's how you would pyramid your trade. If you still suspect price to go higher. Now, where's the target though? Because some people may say, oh, where's the buy side that the market may follow now? It could be the high that it fell from. So this could be a short-term draw on liquidity. Or you could be referencing back to the same old high on the 15 minute time frame, which is this high here. You wanna get price back up into that old high. It's not that the market is going to forget it. You want people to understand that. It's not like the market is going to forget a level instantly. It's going to come back and return to it eventually at some point of time. Now, do I know how long PD arrays are remembered by the algorithm? Someone asked this question. No, I'm not quite sure. I know there's other questions as well people want me to answer, but I'm going to go into the Telegram channel and answer them through a message or a voice note or directly message them one on one and send examples. But this one question I remember they asked, how long does the algorithm remember PD arrays or the old IPTA levels from previous months? I do think that they still remember them in my personal experience because we could be in May, but it could also still remember May's, I mean, March's or February's IPTA highs that haven't been broken and price eventually gets back up to there. But overall, I think if you're looking at it on a higher time frame using IPTA, it's still relatively close to price action. It's a higher time frame analogy. So I think it's going to remember it very often. Lower time frame PD arrays, I don't know how long it uses it or utilizes it. But here, you can see market shift here again. It's the same idea that's unfolding here, breaking that swing high. There's a market shift here. Another opportunity to go long. Into what? Back into a premium. So we'll play it forward to see. What happens? See, price comes back into it again, uses it as quote unquote support or retail support. Look at how price hits that old high. Look at the reaction, old high. This is probably a scalp opportunity, very small. But look at how price continues to push up and give you more than 20 pips. Now, me personally, like I said, I'm using the one minute time frame. You can do whatever you want, guys. You can mix it up. It doesn't have to be the exact same model that I use and use the first fair value gap. The first fair value gap didn't get hit here. You can see the first fair value gap just didn't get my entry and I would have to live with that. But would I go to sleep upset? No. Would I go to sleep trying to revenge shade or chase price? No. It's just still following the code. You could go into two minute and see what forms. You see a fair value gap is here, right? Let's play it forward and see what happens. Look at that. Look at how there's a market shift here. Swing high. Look at the speed. That's on a two minute time frame. Opportunity to go long below 8 p.m. opening price. Let's go to three minutes to see what happens here. Same thing, basically. Got a fair value gap here, right? 
Where's the swing high that's being broken? Here, very obvious. Go long, fair value gap. There you go. Is there one on the five minute? Potentially. No, maybe you don't have one. That's what I mean. I don't normally see this. It's five minute setups. I don't really like personally. One minute, two minute, three minute, you're all game. I'm personally going one, but that doesn't mean you can't find something on the higher ones as well, like two, three, four, or five. I personally don't pick the fives, but that's how I would play that out. Go back to the one minute and you'll see it's the same thing that I'm showing you on the daily time frame, but on a very smaller window of time. But what am I using? I'm utilizing the lunch session and the liquidity that I have available to myself to formulate a trade idea all around the ideology of buying at a cheaper price or selling at a more expensive price. That's what I'm doing here. And we're just going to play it out to the last example. So play, 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 play. I think this is the last example. We got two more. And pause. You see how it already, like if I put the sessions indicator, look at how it runs highs and runs to the shorts, guys. Look at the premium. Look at the discount. Where is it selling in a premium? Let's break it down, guys. Take this off. Swing high broken. Swing high broken, swing high broken. Very first fair value gap that forms. Deontay takes it. Boom. Could there be another one that higher forms? Could I take that as well? Yes. Unless I've already risked my full 1% or 2%. If I'm still able to risk 1% because I partially put on something like a half percent and I want to put on another half percent here, I could do that. So you could get funky with your trades if you want to utilize that. Price comes in, half percent, half percent on that one, half percent on that one you're maxed out at 1%. Or if you're looking for 2%, 1% here, 1% here, you're maxed out. You can't take any more trades at that point. Proper risk management here. We would have a 20 pip t stop loss and a 20 pip TP. So we can instantly see that this would have been rewarding. So if you just, let's say even like very minimalistically, say even 15 pips, right? 15 for 15. So it's still a one-to-one. -one. Dollar for a dollar. Risk a dollar to win a dollar. And you can see instantly, you would have got that 15 pips. Based on what? Purge. There you go, purge. There goes your purge on buy side. Revert. Purging on the premium, reverting back down to the discount. Night and day. I don't have to talk too much about that. Multiple fair value gaps. Market shifts occurring too. You can find price trading into it and then going short into that. And you can see how it trades all the way down. And then at this point, you can see it's taking out sell side. But when it took out this sell side low here, does it form a fair value? Now, many people ask, oh, do you go back in looking for the buy setup or the sell setup? Not necessarily. I don't really want to mess up my winnings. If I won earlier in the session, I'm done. You can see this setup also finishes by like 930. Where's 930? I think I'm passing it. There we go. 930. Generally, that's what I like to see. Happens really early in the session, like 8, 830, 815, 845, 850. Boom, 9 o'clock hits, sells off. Instantly in profit sometimes. Yeah, it trades around there for a bit, but that could psych you out because you see it going up. It looks like it's, it's going to go up. It's going to go up. It's going to go up. Yeah, it will go up. But eventually, if it is truly going to go down, it's going to go down with speed. And it does it. And it breaks down slowly, making lower swing highs and lower swing lows. Or just making a lot of stop hunts. Look how price runs this high here. Quick. Then sells off. Same thing here. Runs the high. Short term high here. Then sells off. Creating what? Lower swing lows. And lower swing highs. That's all it keeps doing there. And people don't realize it. It's all been there. It's all been. All the models are just blended together. Just because I don't speak about a model in its actual title or whatever it's been named doesn't mean I'm not using the actual model too. The market maker sell model, I use it all the time. The market maker buy model, I use it all the time. Just because I don't say it, I do see it. Here, we can see there's multiple levels of buy side here. Buy side, buy side, buy side, buy side. Look at all the swing high, swing high, short term high, short term high, short term high. If the market's gonna buy, it's gonna target all those old highs, right? Price takes out this swing low, no fair value gap up. Price out takes out this swing low, no fair value gap up until we get here. So we zoom in. So there's also a buy and sell 
setup here. This is the buy setup here. Look at the fair value gap here. Yes, there's no market shift, but like I said, sometimes it's the very first fair value gap that the market gives you. There it is. Price trades into it. You're risking a one to one. I think this is a 20. Is it a 20 for 20? No, it's the 15 for 15. So the same thing. Very minimalistic. You zoom out with this price target, buy side. All those short term highs right there. Market maker buy model. That's what's going on there. Turtle soup. That's what we get. Going all the way to Thursday. Gives you more than 15. Gives you 15. Probably gives you a run of about maybe like 18, 19. Close to 20. But look at how you got this. Look. Right. Boom. There it is. Get back up. Now we take off again. You see that? There goes your market maker. Buy model. Many people, oh, you don't you don't use it. Yes, I do. I do. I use it. I see it all the time. So hopefully that was insightful. I'm not going to go into Friday's example, but that's generally what I like to use for the agent session model. Very simple. No higher time frame daily bias. No COT data. No hedge program. No seasonality. Sometimes the market does follow the higher time frame trend for the Asian session model. So I think it was two weeks ago or three weeks ago, I was able to catch, no, it was last week. I was able to catch that UJ swing sell. Not this week that just passed, the prior one. So two weeks ago, I was able to catch that higher swing low. And we'll talk about that in the IPTA data range. So many things I want to show you guys here. It's so simple when you think about it this way. It's just that some people don't expose it or break it down to the complexity of what is really comprised of the market? What's the bulk meat and potatoes of the market? And when I'm showing you is the meat and the potatoes, every time I'm getting right to the point. I'm not wasting time telling you about, oh, lower time frame breaker structure. This No, I don't need to do all that because it sounds confusing to people. People hear all these terminologies being spread around, MSX, MXB. They, they don't know those things. They don't know those things. It confuses people. A new trader is lost, 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 lost. So hopefully that was insightful as well. So we're going to jump right into the monthly examples. So we're going to talk about a classic bullish month and a classic bearish month. And for this example, we're going to switch it up. We're going to use something like a yen cross for this example. And delete some of these things so you guys can't see that. So we don't talk about it too early. This is when I was doing the live session and it kept cutting out while I was talking. And I just said, hey. Quote quits, but I had it prep for you guys. So here we can see this is April 2023. Now we're looking at April opening price right there. Same idea, nothing changes, but this is for the monthly candle. That's the opening price for April. Now, many people said, Oh, why do you not mark out April 1st? April 1st was clearly the weekend. I can't mark it out. It's not the first official trading day. There you go. So people are asking me, how do you find the first official trading day of the day of the month? There it is. Just go into daily time frame. Move your mouse over until it says the next month. See how it says March 31st? I move my mouse over. It goes straight into April 3rd. Clearly, that's the first day. That's how you find it. Same thing here. Look at how this day is April 28th, Friday. I move my mouse over. What does it say? May 1st. There goes your first official trading day. And I think someone had that answer, had that question. And hopefully that answers you. April opening price, discount premium. You can see just looking at the way the market is structured. Look at how I can't get this thing lined up properly the way I want it. There we go. Price drops below the opening price at one point in time. At one point in time, it does move above. But generally, with hindsight, we can see it finishes up. Great. But what is it doing? It's lowering retail traders to go short, thinking that British pound is getting weak and Japanese yen is getting strong. That's what it's probably making traders think. Up, one's up, one's down. My drawings suck. <laughs> one's up, one's down. Right? That's what people are seeing. And plus, it's also a black candle. It's down. Most people, when they see the black candle, what did they think into themselves? Oh, it's selling off from the sky. And I'm going to tell you, these are the moments. These little things can help really improve some people's position trading, swing trading, or just real nifty ways, like really crafty ways to catch pips that are so unrealized that other people just like, how'd you catch that? And they don't even know 
Because once I expose you to this, you're going to be like, wow, I can actually like milk the market without actually using too much brain power. So let's say you use your fundamental, your technical analysis, your seasonal chart and stuff like that. And you come to the conclusion that April was going to go up. So you mean British pound for May, I mean, for April was going to go up and Japanese yen was probably going to go down or get weaker. That means you're suspecting that it will buy at a discount. Because we said, if it's going to go up and you're bullish for the month or bullish for the day or bullish for the week, it needs to drop below the opening price. We can see it happens here. Also, it needs to form a swing low below the open because it's making a low point. It's making a turning point. And we can see it makes that turning point here. That's the swing low here. See that there? That's the swing low. I'm going to take our time. We got as much as time as, much time as we have tonight, man. Swing low right there. One, two, three. That's that swing low formation. They're getting people to think that it's probably going to sell. No, it's not. They're buying. They're buying in this formation. They're getting you to think it's probably going to go short. You have a purge on a previous daily low and a revert back to a previous daily high. Where's the purge occurring? The purge is occurring on this candle here, April 4th, also April 3rd, and maybe even a few other old daily lows like March 30th. It's taking out all those lows. It's purging. This one candle purges that low, this low, and that low. This one. Look at that. Look how it's below it. It ran all those lows. Purges the previous daily low or several daily lows. Then the next day either reverts back to buy side. You can see the third candle here in the swing low does not get back to the high. But eventually price does get back to the high. But it also already starts showing you signs that it's taking out previous daily highs and protecting the lows. So that's another tip and a sign for a bullish trend. The market starts trending, taking out previous daily highs, and the lows do not get rated. Look at how the market trades for nearly a week. This is Thursday, Monday, uh, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Right, starts trending, and then it gives you a down close candle. We'll talk about that. There's higher swing lows forming as well. So just looking at this chart, where's the next highest swing low? You can see, I think it's none of these are swing lows actually, I believe. Nope, 408. Nope, the next higher swing low is here. However, you can see it is stopped. So there's a quick sell stop hunt. Throws large funds off normally. Knocks them out. And then you can see how it continues. So there was like a quick purge on liquidity here. Runs high. So this could be a false break. It's a quick false break on people. That could catch people off guard really hard. But generally, you can see that the swing low is higher here. So that's a sign that it's most likely going higher as well. This looks like a swing low. But it's not. I just I just measured the lows. But it would have looked nice or to see that the swing low formed here. Well, it came pretty close though, but it didn't. But generally, that's what you're gonna see in a bullish month: higher swing lows. The same thing, vice versa. You're gonna get higher swing highs. So let's say this is a swing high here. I'll mark this off at red. That's a swing high. Where's your next higher swing high? Right here. See how the swing high is higher than it? right next one as well higher just like that you can even see this one is a little short shorter at one point but it relatively equal but then eventually you can see it's the false break and it runs it but look at where they're doing the buying below guys it looks just like the Asian session model right nothing has changed here it's the same ideology nothing has changed buy cheap so high. So let's take an example of a bullish month that we can see in hindsight. So we got here February. You see it's clearly an up month. So this is just like back testing or just trying to figure out how the market went through its life cycle throughout the month, all these weeks, these four weeks or whatever the case may be. How did it go about getting here or going up in an uptrend? Let's see how it forms. So instantly, when you put this on here, you can see how the context starts kicking in instantly from the ideology. As soon as I see that, I'm like, oh, wow, it's night and day. They clearly brought below the opening price. It's cheap. They want you to buy it cheaper. Well, they want to buy, buy it cheaper, and they want you to buy at higher prices. That's what they want you to do. They want you to buy up here. That's what they want you to do, which is foolish. Nobody wants to buy high, but retail still does it. Commercials buy cheap below my arrows suck i can't even draw an arrow 
they want to they want you to buy they want to buy cheap and they want you to buy in a premium but notice as well let's, let's follow the checklist do we have a swing low that forms below the opening price at one point in time yes we do maybe have several of them too you have a swing low here you have a swing low here which is also higher than that one you have a swing low here which is also higher than that one and ever since then we keep also getting higher swing lows i think these are both equal no this is actually a higher swing low instead this one's in a premium now at this point so the market is trending the only time i would use this as a long position and so I see the market is trending and just recently broke a swing high formation. So you see how price breaks this swing high. So I'm also teaching you bias here at the same time. If price breaks a swing high, that is a market shift on the higher time frame. You can see also there's a fair value gap there. Price doesn't get back into it, but there is a market shift here occurring with speed. The fact that it breaks a higher time frame daily swing high, that is significant in price. That it's signs that the commercials most likely are looking to buy. That's your cheap, down and dirty way approach to finding bias. If price breaks a swing high, look to buy the next swing low right here. One, two, three. That's the next swing low that forms after this swing high. There you go. Fortunately, it's happening in a premium, which I wouldn't prefer. But that's the only excuse I would tell you where it's permitted to look for buying or higher prices. And you can see how it trends higher. And I want you to notice as well, notice all the down closed candles in this up month. So clearly, if it's an up month, there's either going to be more green candles than black candles. And what happens after these down closed candles or these black candles? They're most likely going to be faced with buying. Let's take a look at all of them. That's one. That's two. That's three. That's four, five, six. Oops. Seven, eight, nine, right? That's nine. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven green days and nine black candles. Now, I'm not sure if it's always going to be the case where the green, if it's an up month, you're going to have more green days, which I think it is. But notice what's happening with this tip or this ideology. If you already come to the conclusion that you're going to be a buyer, right? You just wait for a down close candle by the next day, buy cheap for the day. So when I was telling you about intraday, right? If you're looking to buy, let's see where the DXY is. If you're looking to buy on even any given day, take this example for Tuesday. If you're looking to buy any given day, you're still following the rules. Just buy below 12 a.m. opening price or buy below 2 a.m. opening price during London or buy below 7 a.m. opening price during New York or 8 a.m. opening price during Asian, or just buy below the Sunday's opening price by a certain amount of pips. Once you see that the daily candle has posted a down candle, that's your new opportunity to buy. It's cheap. Buy the next day. You might have an opportunity or a scalp opportunity to catch 30, 40, maybe even 80 pips sometimes, or you're catching the turning point. See how after this down close candle, buy, buy, down close, buy, buy, down close, buy buy down close down close buy 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 down close down close buy buy down close small buy so sometimes it might be two black candles or even three or even four because it's going to take a certain amount of time for them the commercials to reposition themselves long that's what's occurring in these down close candles in a bullish month the down close candles is actually where the huge amount of buying is occurring but the fact that it looks black and it's going down we don't think that way Let's just take a look at the other example as well. Look at all the down close candles here. Notice the down close candles and what happens after the down close candles. Here, if here, you have another one here, two here, and then three. Notice it's buying occurring after the down close candles in a bullish month. We actually do have more green candles here. So you have one, two, three, four, five five down days and the rest we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen fifteen i'm mean, going say fourteen fifteen because it's may first so let's say fourteen fourteen updates compared to one two three four five six way more and instantly that is a quick and dirtier approach to find buy setups 
There's so many ways to utilize this and think about it. You just have to be methodical and think about how the price action moves. Now let's take a look at what a bearish month looks like. So we'll delete that. I don't want you guys to see all the annotations yet. So this is December 2022. And we can see instantly price at one point in time moves above the opening price and then sells off. It makes a high somewhere and then it makes a low at one point. And the low actually comes in pretty close at the end of the month. But it still follows suit, a classic bearish month. Let's zoom in, bring this up here. A classic bearish month, price moves above the open, got that check. We can see that happens here. A swing high forms above the open. We definitely have that. Let's mark that off. Have one there. That's a swing high. So that and that swing high formation, they're actually most likely looking to sell. Now, we don't know if they were going to. Obviously, it's hindsight. But if you were looking at it at that time of day, during this month, 2022 December, if you were trading GU, you came to the conclusion that you were bearish, you would look for a swing high formation because it's the downtrend starts with the swing high. I want you guys to know that. The downtrend starts with a swing high. <laughs> the uptrend starts with a swing low. That's it. Don't overthink what's occurring here. Swing high. There's a purge on the previous daily high and a revert back to sell side instantly. You can see here instead, the third candle actually takes out the middle candles low. I like that. Purge on previous daily high with this candle, revert back down on sell side liquidity here. And you can see a price continues going lower. We also see there are lower swing lows forming. So if you need to mark off some swing lows, let's see here, there's a swing low that forms here. Now this swing low actually forms inside a discount. Not that it matters, but then we have a higher swing low here, but eventually it is broken. You see, it does get broken. And what happens when a swing low is broken? That is a momentum shift, right? A market shift occurring. Short term, low approach, right? The lowest and laziest approach that you can take. Swing low broken, that's an alert. Wait for what? A lower swing high formation to form. Do we have one? Yes, we have one here as well. The formation is actually a part of the break. This is the third candle in that swing high. It's a lower swing high. Short opportunities are on the way. What could you do if you knew that? This blending ideas. You could blend these concepts together, this guy. You don't have to use, use one concept. Blend it together and paint a paint picture. Up close candle. Small range as well. Larry Williams. Shout out to Larry Williams. Right? Long term trading secrets for short term trading. I believe that's the name of the book, second edition. He was talking about the natural range cycle of the market. It's either large or small. You're either getting a very large day one day, or a very large week, or a very large month, or then you're getting a very small week, or a small month, or a small day. You get a small day, odds are somewhere in the future, you're going to get a large candle. Everybody knows that. And we don't know exactly what day it might be. But we could have a speculation. We know that the most ideal day to trade, like I was saying at the beginning of the video, if you still are still watching with me, Tuesday to Wednesday is most ideal. What day does this sell setup happen on a Tuesday, guys? <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Would you see that? It's a Tuesday. Look how large that candle is on a Tuesday. Huge amount of pips. Let's just measure it from high to low. Sheesh. Look at that. Great amount of pips. Rewarding. Very rewarding. But you could also see, look at the speed. Look at the idea. The fair value gap. Think about this. Just like the Asian session, the sell setup. Where is this fair value gap forming? Above the opening price. Let's take, an Let's take a look at where a sell setup is. Look at this sell setup here. Where is these fair value gaps forming? Above 8 p.m. opening price. There it is. Look at all those fair value gaps up there. And what happens? It sells. Is that not the same thing here, guys? It absolutely is. It's just a higher time frame concept. That's all it is. Higher time frame confidence. Take buy side. What did it do for the month? It probably took out the previous month's high. 
That's what it did. Let's mark off November just for a little bonus. Let's see if we get it. Did it take out November? No, it didn't take out November's high. But did it take out clean highs? Absolutely. Where do we have clean highs? Right here. See that? Look at those relatively equal highs where buy side is residing. Right here. Purge is over. Now, retail may see this as what? Resistance, which is not wrong. I'm not saying that's not wrong. But however, most likely it's going to get run and their stops are going to get run because they have super stop, tight stops. 2 pip SO, 5 pip SO, 15 pip SO, it runs it. And then price runs in the, dire runs in the direction that they want it to go in and then they're upset. They're upset. And then they're revenge trading. And that's normally where they get them. Then they start seeing these short-term rallies. The market runs up against them. And they're like, what? I thought it was going to go low, right? So it goes up, stops them out because they knew it was going to go down as quote-unquote resistance, right? They see this as resistance, but they have a tight stop loss. But price easily runs their stop by 10, 20, 30 pips, runs above it, then it sells. But on that way going down, there's these short-term rallies. So it goes up, comes down. But then at that moment in time, there's these short-term rallies that happen. Those short-term rallies normally is where it gets those traders psychologically distressed, and they get out of their they get out of their shorts because they see the market goes up, and the same thing occurs up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down until you get what buyer's remorse every time they think it's gonna buy, and they keep buying, but instead it keeps dropping. It's insane when you think about the concepts and how they coded the market. It's really, it's really interesting. But you can see how simple an idea like this can formulate. You have an area of consolidation, right? An area of consolidation. I'm literally taking, let's just say for December, this was the New York lunch session and this was the Asian session. That's what this is, guys. That's literally what this is. Think about this as what I'm showing you here on the high time frame. This is December and this is November, right? Oh, it should actually be doop, like that. This is... November, that's December. Look at it. November, December. What happens going into December? It purges. And then it sells off. Running what? Sell side. Look at the sell side. All the way down here. Right there. Look how speed runs to it, guys. These ideas are all the same. Hopefully, people are comprehending that. Because I know I'm really stimulated and I'm excited. I love talking about this. Because I just see it from a different point of view. And I'm just like... I want people to see exactly what I see sometimes. I wish I could take my eyeballs out and put it in your head and be like, look, this is what the market is doing. Comprehend this with me. Do you see that? And some people say, no, I don't. I'm like, ah, let's spend some time and, and, and talk about it. And hopefully I'm portraying the message well enough for you guys to see it. Very clear idea here, right? And you get a lower swing high here in that formation. You get another what? Lower swing high. That's what it forms here. Another one, they're selling in that pullback, guys. Pullback, sell. Pullback, sell. Pullback, sell. Pullback, look at that. Pullback, sell. They're doing it. And what, what happens again here? That speed. That's another fair value gap here. Look at our price trades into it. You sell. And look at that. Look at all the up close candles as well. Up close, up close, up close. Yes, it might be a tough model idea. But if you could get the sell on a Tuesday, right, after the up close or a Wednesday, it'll be ideal. So Monday, up close, sell. Up close, up close, Tuesday, up close, Wednesday. Ah, so you don't get the sell. You get the sell on Thursday and then, and then Friday. We can blend these ideas. Now let's take a look at another example. Let's look at September. So we can clearly see it's a bearish. It's a bearish month. Don't overthink the process, guys. It's a bearish month. We can see it's bearish. What's the first thing you want to do here when you're backtesting it? Where's the opening price? Here. There you go. Make it black. So if that's the open. We know where premium and discount is instantly. Opening price. Put it right here so we can see the price action 
moves above the opening price at one point in time and it starts off selling, creating a swing high instantly. There we go. Now we start picking away at this chart and annotating it and comprehending it. Price then also does what? Breaks a swing low at one point in time. But also on the left side of the chart, are we breaking any highs from previous months? Yes, we are. So you can see that. Old high here. We have an old high up here. Another old high here. Clean. Right? Gets there. Takes out. I don't know if that's July or June. Oh, it takes out a high in June. Takes out July's high for sure. Right there. Is that the highest high in July? Yeah. Let me see. Double check. It's June. July. Yeah. So it takes out high in July. September runs that. Ever since running that, we can see after running those highs, what happens? We get a market shift. Look at that swing low that breaks after taking out the high. So use the replay function. Here we go. Swing highs broken. Previous month's highs broken. Forward, forward, forward. Boom. Swing low broken. My mind instantly, because I'm here also showing you how to read daily bias or try to catch the daily bias at least. Wait for a lower swing high to form. There it is. See that? That's your lower swing high. And you look to go short. Now, let's say you're not confident in catching this. Just wait for an up close candle then. And then go short the next day. Odds are you may be able to find something. And we can see. That's the end of it. We weren't able to get anything after that. But you can see how the market creates a lower, lower swing high. It makes a high above the open, but it convinces everybody, hey, we're going long. Psych, we're not. We're not. That's exactly what you do there. So looking at most recent time, I'm tracking UJ for the month of May. So if you guys realize, I've been call calling gold. I've been calling GU. AU is the most difficult so far. Um, so far this year. I forgot what month I did it for. But gold, we were able to call all of it down to the lower side for that month. Um, GU as well, all the way down, a little bit down, and then all the way back up. And then we were able to call UJ this month. I think AU last, last month was really difficult, really consolidating. Things were definitely not moving as the way I wanted it to. But it's okay. But you roll with the punches, and you still find the small setups. Here, you can see the DXY as well. What is it doing? Look at the May opening price, guys. It's already showing its hand here. What I just showed you and how to find a bullish month is showing itself currently in our current month. Drops down, runs, creates a swing low. And you can see as well, it's protecting the swing lows. Why is it protecting the swing low? Because we know most likely, ideally, if you're buying here, why would you want to run your stop? Unless there's some other entity in the place, right? In the fish tank that you want to throw off their game, right? Or you want to kind of scrap with them, right? You want to cause a little chaos in the tank, you run the stop here, and then you run it back up. That happens. I prefer price to come down, take out the IPTA 20 day low, and then run higher. If you look and refer to the IPTA data range library, literally what I have drawn up on the chart right now is all the examples of the IPTA data range. Run one side of liquidity, run back to the other side, purge revert. That's all the market is, purge revert, purge revert. There are other things, of course, other complex ideas, offset distribution, reaccumulation, those things can occur as well. But in more simpler terms, market is just looking for liquidity above highs and lows. And it's using certain reference points because it's all coded. It's using a certain point of time. Now, do we know the exact perfect time based on what other people have told us, like ICT? Because we're taking his word? No. I'm using the 20-day look back. May 1st, 20, 40, 60, find the highest high. We can see, sure or not, price gets to that 20-day look back high. Wow. Now, many people say, I hear, oh, now you're looking to go short. That may not be the case, right? Because price could continue. Price could now continue to trend higher. I'm not saying it's going to trend up there that fast, but it could continue to trend higher. We are in a premium, though, so that's something that would go against my overall will to want to look to buy unless the price action is very much showing the signs to want to go higher. That's what I'm doing there. 
you could see here all the down close candles so far as well all the down close <laughs> candles it's so remarkable when you see it now and you're like wow it's so much easier let's look at the most obvious ones where there's buying after it not the two down close but like this buying after it buying's after it buying is after it could we suspect buying after this candle be good there could be a good possibility flip the coin that to that next week monday will be an up day it's a possibility or instead if monday is a duke because i don't like to trade mondays it could be another down day and i would like to see monday be down tuesday up or if tuesday's down i'll be buying wednesday and that's how i would play it out now if we look at uj same thing is occurring. Price created this swing low ever since below the opening price. You can see even it purges a previous daily high or the look back 20 day high between May 1st and April 3rd. That, that was the highest high that we had. Runs it. Look what happens when it runs it. Very sensitive price. Purges it. And then it reverts. Where does it purge it? In a premium. Sells off. So the commercials are able to get one on people. They sell off there. Nice. That doesn't mean retail couldn't catch it too, because I know there are people probably that saw this setup. Sells off. And I normally see that at IPTA a lot often, especially with gold. That's my mind can remember a lot of the gold IPTAs back in the years, last two, three years. I've seen a lot of examples, or even DXY sometimes, or US oil. Price would run the high real quick the first two days of the week, the first week, and then just sell off. That's a quick scalp opportunity. I don't usually, usually utilize it that much, but I see it and often make note of it. Price then drops down, creates a swing low. They're back cheap. So they sold high. Now they got it. They brought it back down cheap. What are we filling in? In efficiency. Look at this fair value gap here. And if you notice on the daily updates, if you look at the daily updates, there are lines that go like this. And what do I have there? I have market shift and I have what? Caution signs. On both of them telling me oh if price if price broke this going into this we need to see a higher swing low compared to when this swing high was broken this is that swing low instantly I knew UJ was gonna most likely go higher I started seeking longs I see I started seeking longs here eventually I got stopped out I was able to take profit scale out but then I got stopped with a trailing stop and then here I was able to find that long-term swing setup here for the month and hold all the way up to what? Buy side liquidity. 40 day look back high. That's that. Let's take this off. That's that 40 day look back high here, that red line. All the way up there. But notice all the down close candles and where the buying is occurring. Down close candle and a discount, we're buying. <laughs> that simple. That simple sometimes. That simple. Down close candle in a discount, we're buying. And I actually want to see if it actually was the same thing. Cause that myself is really a really good idea. Let's see, it's April. It's a bullish one. Yeah, down close candle below the open. Look at the buying that's occurring. Down close, down close. Discount, discount. Very discounted days because it's below the open. Buy. Let's see if we get any up close candles and a premium. Up close, sell. Up close, sell. Wow, it's amazing. Let's see this as well in the premium. Many up closes, eventually we get up close and a nice sell trend. See how the market starts trending as well? That's key. Sorry about that. That is also key. Look at how it trends. It's taking out what? All the previous daily lows. Low, 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 low. This throws people off their game. This is an inside bar right here because it doesn't break the previous high or previously low. Retail traders are normally very lost. Normally I wait to trade the next day and see what happens. Price purges, another purge. Look, they offset people, purge. Then they revert it back. It's so, it's like really cool to see it, you know? And people don't realize that at, at all. When it comes to macros though, too, because many people were saying like, oh, how, uh, once again, you know, you were able to find these great setups. Like, why am I not finding it? It's because I'm using other ideologies like macros. It's not even ideology. It's literally technicals. I'm, I'm literally going down and going into the technicals. For example, interest rates control foreign exchange currency. You're not going to get no free advertisement on mine. Watch. Here we go. Fed's rate is 5.2. 
right? Five point quarter. Japanese or Bank of Japan, BOJ, what's the rate? Negative 0.1. If you had a bank account and you had to save money, where would you rather put your money? In an account that gains you interest of 5.25 or an account that earns you negative interest rate? Clearly the account that's positive. I'm putting my money there. That's what's occurring here as well. Think about it as that, right? Just like when Apple, I don't know if you guys know a recent time, Apple just recently opened up a savings account and they have an interest on it for people to, you know, if you put your money in my bank, I will give you money in return for banking with me. That's how banks are super competitive. That's how they get people's money. That's a whole nother topic of discussion. But banks are, when you see banks do that and Apple's not even a bank, you can see how they're just a great company overall. No financial advice because I'm not a professional advisor. Consult your professional advisor or someone that's certified or licensed. But if I had to pick any stock and this is not financial advice and I had to put my money into a stock to invest, I would put a portion of my money into Apple. Simple, bro. They are just really like bulletproof. They diversify their their whole revenue stream from ads to music to healthcare to banking. It's really incredible to music. It's like, it's incredible entertainment. They're incredible in what they do, honestly. I'm not going to lie. Shout out to Apple. Um, But you can see, I'd rather put my money into that. And the whole idea Apple has now opened a banking service for Apple users and you'll get money on saving your money with them, putting, putting your money into their bank account because they have an interest rate on their bank account. Really crucial things to make your money, earn money for you while you don't work. It's a whole key cash flow. Maybe not going to tangent, but feds, man, the feds, the feds, the feds, higher rate than Japan. Clearly interest rate differential. I'm favoring the feds over the Bank of Japan. Plus the seasonal tendencies may bullish. You guys see that it's bullish for the month, guys. Bullish right there. Boom. Bullish for the month. Japanese yen, however, was not so so. May, not really. Sideways. Does that mean that we're not going to get anything out of UJ because it's consolidating here and it's not going down? No. You can still find price action lining up and following the seasonal tendencies, even though yen is telling you it's not going to give you much. Clearly, yen was getting weaker. Same thing here, British pound. So, British pound is inverse to the DXY. It's going down. That's a good sign. That this point of time in this time of year, May, DXY is going up. British pounds going down. That's a good sign that the seasonal charts are aligning. Same thing for all AU, right? Now let's take a look just briefly as we come towards the end. Let's take a look at British pound first. You know, delete this. We'll go into May. So this is May here, going into June. So we got a couple more weeks left, right? I get that right? Yes, you do. If this market is still going lower, that's the opening price for the month. Notice where the swing high is forming, guys. Right there. They've already priced in the shorts. And then they created what? A lower swing high formation here. Where did they form that lower swing high formation? Inside this PD array here. After also doing what? Taking out previous monthly highs or old highs, giving you a fair value gap here. Now, the bulk of this fair value gap, most of it, if I wanna just measure it, most of it, you can see on the dashed line, most of this blue shaded area is where? In a premium, guys. I like to see that. The fact that this fair value gap is not fully in a premium, but majority of it, oops, put it down here. Majority of it is in a premium. It almost is equal here, to be honest. If you had to get technical with it, let's see. percent of it it's pretty even honestly this fair value gap is pretty even around here but majority of it you can see is definitely in a premium I, you, you can argue and say it's pretty equal honestly but it's at fair value really stands still in fair value price trades up into it and it sells off making that lower swing high formation so another purge on the previous daily high then a revert the third day on the swing high, one, two, three. People always say, oh, you're counting the candles. I'm not counting it for any significant. A swing high is always going to be three bars or three days. 
even if it's a weekly swing high or swing low, it's a swing low or swing high that forms in three bars or three weeks. Same thing for a monthly candle, just to reference that. So there's no confusion. See this swing high? It's a monthly swing high. It implies of December, January, and February. It's a monthly swing high. It only takes three bars. Same thing on a weekly. Let's find a weekly swing high. Here. That's one week worth, another week worth, another week worth. Three weeks. That's it. A swing high is normally in three bar formation. A one hour swing bar is three hours. That's all it is. You can see here, back on the monthly perspective, they're selling above here, guys. It's showing you. There goes the market shift. There goes the speed through that swing low. One, two, three. That's a swing low formation. Yes, this swing low is also comprised into the swing high. I feel like that tricks people up. This is a swing high and also a swing low. So it's also all in one. You got to really be nifty in reading the price action, understanding the candles. Just because you see the swing low here doesn't negate the fact that this is not a swing high formation as well. It's just comprised together. Swing low, swing high. But this one breaks it here. Boom. Market shift. Wait for price to trade into it. Find a sell set up here. Wednesday got up close. Thursday down. Right. See how Monday's up. Look how Monday's up close candle. Tuesday's down. I would rather see it happen in a premium, but here you could still see the market is following the flow of where price wants to go. Could what could we be aiming for? Probably equal lows. So if I had to do a IPTA data range, right? So starting off with May, let's just do. Everybody's asking, oh, 20 days or 20 bars. I do the 20 bars because it's just a quick, dirty approach to finding a range that I have. So here, I, I pull it back 20 bars. Let's say hypothetically 20 bars. I've been doing it for a very long time, 20 bars. If anything, it roughly is around 20 days. Some people say, oh, no, it's actually roughly around 30 days. Regardless of the fact, I am using previous daily data to help me project levels to either enter on or exit at that's the whole point using previous data points to help me find exit points look at all these swing lows here right all these swing lows are eventually going to get taken out this is the 20 day low here that's it right there so if i had to say this is like a draw on the price action at this point i want to see the price draw to this all these too. I want it to draw to these swing lows. That's a good sign. Let's look at now AU. Delete all this. Let's go to May. We'll go to June. And we got the opening price. There you go. It's the last thing. That's the opening price. Anything above is a premium. Anything below is a discount. Look at how they pull this price action all the way up above the open. Very dramatic here for this one. And then they sell it short. What happens? They form a swing high before this sell off. Has to be a swing high that forms before it drops down. There's no doubt about it. There's no question about it. Nobody can tell me different that, oh, no, it's not a swing high that forms before it drops. Yes, it is. That is sound logic. How could price make a high point and just drop? It has to be doing it in a swing high. Swing high forms, see price break down. You can see you got speed and a premium above the opening price. See how price trades into it multiple times and finally sells off. No market shift, though, but the PD array itself is forming above the opening price after doing what taking out a higher time frame buy side liquidity here you can see that there so it's almost similar to the agent session model take out buy side higher time frame pd ray forms above the opening price and a premium find a sell opportunity look how it's selling off all your up close candles most likely is going to give you a selling opportunity Let's see if we get one on tuesday look there tuesday ideal day to trade tuesday up close Trades into it, sell off. Wednesday, not much, but it's still previous targeting previous daily lows. It's targeting low after low. Have to offset it, but eventually the lows start getting taken out again. Another offset. And that's how you see. Look how it's sensitive here. 
hits it, then runs back the next day. Hits it, runs away. It's a sensitive price point because it's the open, guys. It is the open. So hopefully this was insightful. I do apologize for the technical difficulties that happened last night. Hopefully that everything I went through today explains a lot of the thought process that I have. I will not stop doing this. I know it may sound rep repetitive. I may sound like a broken record, but it's all out of love because I know that this is the foundation to what gave me success in trading. This is all I want to do. What made you successful? This, guys. This is it. So, peace.